Hello everybody, how are you all doing? Hope you're having a great day today. Later this year, the PlayStation 4 will be blowing out 7 candles. However, this birthday party will sadly be its goodbye party as well. The console has already proven with The Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima that there is still life underneath the hood. But there is no denying that the PlayStation 4, from a technical standpoint, is running on its last limbs. Luckily, the next generation is already eager to take over. After Sony took a running start with the PlayStation 4 Pro, they now promise an even greater technical leap forward with their PlayStation 5, and not only in terms of graphics, but in audio and feel as well. Let's take a technical preview at the PlayStation 5. After Sony's minimalistic jet black design of the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 5 promises to be the eye-catcher in the room. The PlayStation 5 comes with a futuristic curved design that can be placed both standing and on its side. But of course, the design isn't everything, it's what's inside all that plastic that counts. When we take a look underneath the hood, the specifications of the PlayStation 5 are nothing short of impressive. The CPU consists of a 3.5GHz Zen 2 octa-core processor, the GPU is based on AMD's RDNA 2 architecture and boasts an impressive 10 teraflops. All of that combined with 16GB of GDDR6 RAM. Looks impressive, right? Although, on paper, it does look like the PlayStation 5 will be weaker than the 12TB Xbox Series X. However, it is not fair to judge the PlayStation 5 solely on the amount of teraflops involved. We need to take a step back and look at the bigger picture, and the bigger picture tells us that it is capable of a lot more than the 10 teraflops would suggest. That's because Sony worked very closely with AMD to develop technology scale for the PlayStation 5. Sony just didn't take existing RDNA 2 chipsets, no no no, AMD developed new chips that perfectly offered what Sony was looking for. All this computing power needs powerful cooling. Some of you might have noticed the fans going into overdrive while playing a graphically intensive game on their PlayStation 4, and sources say that the Xbox Series X is suffering from heating issues. This will apparently not be a problem when it comes to the PlayStation 5. The power consumption and heat of the PlayStation 4 always tended to fluctuate depending on the game you were playing, and the fan rotation speeds were adjusted accordingly based on the computing power that was being used. This will no longer be the case in the PlayStation 5 as it now draws a constant power consumption, meaning that the cooling system is predetermined. Console temperature nor fan speed will fluctuate. All the GPUs and teraflops aside, the most important innovation by far is the inclusion of an SSD drive. This flash-based storage space technology is a lot faster than your traditional hard drives and no longer struggles with fragmentation issues. Because the PlayStation 5 can find data on a whim because of the SSD means that theoretically load screens are also a thing of the past. The SSD also gets a generous capacity of 825GB, but do know that the PlayStation 5's operating system will need a part of that space. If that space ever becomes full, don't worry, you can always expand it with more SSDs, although not every SSD manufacturer will be supported. Consult your local retailer. All that computing power will give us real-time ray tracing technology and allow us to play our favorite games in 8K resolution. But for some of us, that's not enough. For some of us out there, including yours truly, are audiophiles. What does the PlayStation 5 have to offer us? Well, the PlayStation 5 offers us their own 3D audio technology. Thanks to a customized audio engine, the sound in your headphones or even just your typical stereo speakers will make you feel like the sound is coming from everywhere. This technology comes from Sony's own research into audio waves and how they reflect on certain surfaces. By changing frequencies of certain sounds, it creates the impression that the sound is coming from a different direction. However, not everybody's ears are the same and these frequency adjustments will not have the same effect on everybody. Because of this knowledge, Sony will have 5 of the most common presets in place that you can choose from to adjust the frequency that best suits you. Enough about the console itself, let's take a look at the controller now. With every new generation, Sony added something new to their DualShock controller. For the PlayStation 5, however, Sony is saying goodbye to the DualShock name after more than 20 years. The controller has been rebranded to the DualSense, and of course this is a marketing ploy, it also points to the major changes Sony is making. The design is clearly still based on the old DualShock controller, I mean the thumbsticks are still positioned next to each other in the middle of the controller, but the shape of the DualSense has been slightly altered. The controller looks bigger and the hand grips are at a slightly different angle. Because of the angle change, the controller should now fit more easily in your hands. The touchpad has returned, albeit larger, and the light bar has been made more subtle. The share button has been rebranded to the create button, which is not a coincidence given that next to screenshots and clips, Sony also promises a new way of sharing your in-game moments. And
And just like the console itself, the controller boasts a futuristic look with a black and white color scheme. For the more impressive innovations, we need to take a look underneath the hood of the controller as well. The age-old rumble mechanic has been replaced with haptic feedback, a technology you might already be familiar with if you own a Switch. If you don't, see it like this. Haptic feedback is basically a three-dimensional form of rumble that allows for more subtle and varied forms of rumbling. The other big innovation comes in the form of adaptive triggers. Based on a specific action the game is asking for, it might become harder or easier to pull the trigger. If you don't quite understand what I mean, let me put it this way. The effort required to string a bow will now be felt in your triggers. Next to the technical innovations, the DualSense will also have a microphone built inside the controller next to the built-in speakers. This means you no longer need to buy a microphone in order to talk to people. Although Sony still suggests a good headset for prolonged gaming sessions. Now, all the specifications aside, why is it that Sony is launching two consoles? A standard version, which is $500, and a digital version, that is $400, or your regional equivalent. But what's the difference? Well, the standard $500 version comes with an Ultra HD Blu-ray drive. The $400 all-digital version is, well, digital only, meaning it does not have a Blu-ray drive. Other than that, they are identical when it comes to the computing power inside. Unlike the Xbox Series X and S, where a smaller price tag means an inferior model, you are not buying an inferior version of the PlayStation 5. You are simply buying a version that has one less feature. With this discless version, Sony recognizes the people who would rather buy their games digitally. And why have them pay $100 extra for a feature they'll probably never even use? And the announcement of an all-digital edition didn't come as a surprise. Sony experimented with something similar back in 2004, their PSP Go, although it wasn't a huge success. It was quite a contrary, actually. But there is one thing that is going to happen whether we like it or not. The digital era for video games is right at our doorstep. This was a technical preview into the PlayStation 5, and as we're wrapping up, I would like to thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more of this type of content or gaming news reviews and release roundups, please leave a like and subscribe along with the notification bell so that you never miss another upload. And I'll see you when I see you. That's awesome.